Well, I gotta say it is a very, very good morning today. We are still at the uh, Sparks Lake. Last night was freezing cold. Uh, the mosquitoes also, they went away once it got, uh, I would say under 55 degrees maybe or something like that. Anyways, pa an hour past dark, they were gone. You guys know what this is. This is a little hair buzzer. Also, my battery's on low, but some people have been hating on my mullet. And I'm going to cut my mullet. And not because of people hating on my mullet, but, you know, I was trying to be very American and uh, trying to go for the most American haircut possible, but I feel like I'm going to end up on the front page of People of Walmart blog on Tumblr. You know what I'm saying? So, today's the day. We're going to cut it off. some change away from Bend, Oregon. We're in a place called Shanico, which is a, um, a ghost town, but people still live here. So that by definition would make it not a ghost town, I guess. For reference, I parked across the street from the ice cream place next to the hotel. Uh, and again, Ghost towns don't really have ice cream parlors, but this one apparently does. This gold ghost town is uh, kind of unique. It used to be the, I don't know, world's largest wool place. And just like most of the ghost towns in the United States, especially the West Coast, uh, people originally came out here for gold. And I'm guessing there wasn't a lot of gold out here, otherwise it would have stuck around. Here's the uh, Shanika Wedding Chapel. Not sure if people still use this or not. Left of the chapel, there's this building, really nice. Off in the distance, there's a, a ghost living at that house. He's outside watering his uh, grass right now. And just around the corner, there's uh, what looks to be like an old scrap yard. Those look like a couple cars from, I'd say, the 30s. Uh, here's an old tractor from who knows when. Looks pretty cool. Caddy corner to the hotel, there is the Shanico Museum which is just open. It looks like it's always open. Uh, you can donate there. And let's go on inside. It looks like there's a bunch of old vehicles, the 1918 American La France fire truck, 1918 Chevrolet, 1919 Studebaker. Wow, these are look like all Dick Tracy cars over here. Um, 1925, I can't read it because there's a bit, a lot of dust. Holy moly, 1923 Chevrolet panel. Looks like a carriage with some wheels on it. There's an old uh, buggy over there. Some more old vehicles over here, which I can't really tell what they are. But man, this is pretty cool. This looks like some kind of, I don't know, limousine or something, or maybe this was an old, uh, uh, what do you call those things with, Oh, I think it says ambulance right there. Yeah, I was thinking it was for coffins and things. There's an old horse-drawn carriage right here. Very good condition for how old it is. Can't believe that people traveled <laughs> across country by these things. That is some kind of tanker carriage for something. I'm gonna guess oil because uh, there wasn't a lot of um, you know a lot of things back in the day that they could have they could have wanted besides maybe water, but I really don't think that they would have gone all the way to transport water with something like that. I think it would have been like heating oil or cooking oil or something. Oh, yeah. What'd you find? A skateboard? <laughs> what? No way. That's, That's so cool, funny. Man. We found something cool. Well, this is super cool. Yeah. This is, man. That's awesome. That's an antique. It is. So uh, we're in a place called Kent, which is uh, also a quote unquote ghost town. Although this one isn't very spooky. And there's a, a grain silo over here. 
and there's a you know still people you know living in this little town so it's not like a I don't know it's not what the skateboard isn't that good <laughs> it's not like one of the most amazing ghost towns ever I mean it might be a kind of a cool place to take some pictures of some old buildings like this uh, but really there's nothing more than that it's not like you know some uh, I don't know you know what I'm saying We're oh wow this is interesting. It has that smell of old. Yeah, it's the moldy smell. You know, it's that like cardboard smell mixed with uh, old wood. This is interesting. Oh, wow. This is a big old barn with uh, just a bunch of old stuff in here. So here's somebody's... Uh, photo album. They were definitely into, uh, you know, cars and there's like a monster, what is that, a school bus? <laughs> monster truck. So yeah, it's interesting. I, I wonder, I wonder if somebody just owned this place and just, you know, couldn't, you know, pass away and didn't have family or couldn't pay their taxes on it or something. I mean, who knows? Um, interesting. A little knife. A couple dogs. Well, I've seen my fair share. So if you want a more in-depth video, go check out Josh's video because he went further inside <laughs> the uh, the rabbit hole inside. And I guess there was like some interesting stuff. Just briefly, what was it? Yeah, they had a whole family that used to live there. Um, and I went to like, they had like, they had a door, you can tell by the room. But like they had their coats on the coat rack. Everything was still like almost pristine condition. So huh. you'll be able to see it when I upload it. But it's pretty <laughs> interesting. I could not believe it. <laughs> So now we're at the uh, bottom of the, uh, you know, river bottom, I guess. Interesting, because it says parking for Warm Springs tribal members only. Although I am parked right there, just on the side of the road. Just because we were driving by and we happened to notice how beautiful the, uh, the river was. But also, somebody made some little, like, chill hangout spot. Whoa, looks like this is a, a fishing area as well. It's sketchy, man. Yeah. So it looks like they're probably fishing for... Well, fish with these uh, uh, nets, but ch check out this thing down there. These guys totally made like a little pullout spot to uh, to get down to the uh, for a closer, uh, you know, a little bit closer to the uh, to the water to put the to put the nets in. I'm guessing they're fishing, fish? probably fishing for salmon. Dude, yeah. We right we're uh, just a little bit further up from the last spot. This is where the fish ladder is. We're gonna go check it out. It's the first time I've ever seen a fish ladder in my life. And this is so the fish can get upstream, upstream to spawn. So, it looks like it's right here. Because those rapids over there, that's a lot of water right now. We would die if we went in there. Yeah. Well look, that's so much water. But, something else I wanted to point out is like just like that last little uh, that little deck plateau thing with the uh, with the nets. There, <laughs> look at all the uh, look at all the plateaus over there. So that's that's to catch fish. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's a couple more down there. So this is uh, this is a fishing hole, the local uh, Indian Reservation fishing hole. I've never seen anything like this before. What about you? Nah, but I, I want to fish. 
So next up on today's uh, journeys is uh, White River Falls State Park. Um, basically there's a falls on the other side that I'll show you shortly. They diverted water through these massive tunnels into this holding tank from the holding tank down the hill and that's where the uh, electricity was produced. Now these uh, went, out, went out of uh, usage in uh, 1963 because of the huge um, hydroelectric dams along the Columbia River. Uh, just kind of put it out of business. But uh, let's go have a peek first and check out one of the holding dams. All right, here we are. You can't really tell if it wasn't for this uh, concrete wall here. But this, this was all water at one point. Float in from there, the falls are uh, off in the distance. If I zoom in, you might be able to see a little bit of the mist coming up from there. And then down below where Josh is, that is where the powerhouse is. So here's part of the old tank. Just want to show you guys uh, for reference what this uh, looks like. Once you're down towards the bottom, you can see how the water flowed into the old uh, power plant down here. As you can see, some people checking it out. What's up, guys? <laughs> uh, so we'll go check that out in a second. But let me show you quick, real quick, what a spectacular view this is. I mean, it's a double waterfall. There's one up top, and then there's this one here with this beautiful, murky, cloudy kind of water. I bet on a sunrise, this place would be amazing. Check this out. How insane is that? for no particular reason. Uh, there's clearly a little trail that kind of goes down. It doesn't say that you can't come down here, so I'm really not really sure why he's firing off his air horn like that. So anyways, we'll go check out the uh, power plant after Captain Buzzkill gets up and goes home. This, my friends, is an old abandoned power plant, which, uh, <laughs> this is so cool and it's great because there's not too much graffiti down here either so you can actually tell kind of what is what and how things used to kind of go uh, although graffiti is cool at some places definitely I like this rustic look here so I'm happy that you know it's not all you know spray painted up but wow this is awesome so yeah Here's, here's the internals of an old turbine to produce electricity. And I'm sure if there's any engineers or electricians watching this video, you probably know what those parts are. We don't. I know those are probably some kind of gear system and that's some kind of like magnet with uh, wires or whatever, creates electricity and then boom, you got lights. Boom, I like that. Here's the uh, exterior shot of the building. Uh, looks like they use local materials. These uh, stones and then some kind of uh, concrete or something but uh it sure is cool yo good find josh down the spillway it says 1910 so i want to take a wild guess and say well part of it was built in 1910. 